I was lonely and miserable, Scarlowy continued, till at last the manager came. I hope now that you're a better engine. Yes, sir. Please, sir. Because I've asked Mr. Bobby to come and look after you. Mr. Bobby had helped to build me in England. I liked him, so we soon had steam up. Come on, Scarlowy, he said. We must help the workmen finish the line before the inspector comes. I didn't mind pulling trucks with Mr. Bobby, and we worked so hard that by the time Lernais arrived, the line was ready. Lernais never got so excited and bouncy as I did. He worked without hurry or fuss. Trucks often played tricks on me to make me cross, but they soon found that teasing Lernais was a mistake. He was shunting one day when I came alongside. I was excited. I'm pulling the director's train. I said. I'm taking the inspector tomorrow. Think of that. Lernais responded. You mind your books and bounces then, Scarloe, he said at last. The directors won't like them. Puh! I snorted and bounced away to fetch the coaches. Peep, peep! I whistled. Hello, girls. Who is it? Agnes's deep voice echoed from the back of the shed. It's an engine, whispered Beatrice the guard's van. He's come to take us out. Beware of strange engines! warned Agnes. We must be on our guard. Our guard has just come, giggled Beatrice. Jemima and Ruth and the other coaches sighed with relief. I pulled them all happily to the station. Agnes, still suspicious, kept muttering, Be on your guard! Be on your guard! But I was too excited to listen. It might have been better if I had... I was sizzling with excitement as I ran around and back down on Agnes. It's fun! It's fun! You may look harmless, she whispered, but we'll watch you! We'll watch you! She took me quite aback, but even Agnes couldn't complain about our upward journey. We stopped at every station and the directors got out to admire the arrangements. Everything went well. I forgot about Agnes and the manager, smiling, joined us on the footplate for the journey down home. It looks so easy, Mr. Bobby, he said as we rode gently down. Can I drive him, please? We were running nicely. First race, first race. I hissed happily, gaining speed and all unknowing. I began to bounce. The manager, alarm, closed my regulator. Too quickly and too much. Agnes's buffers clashed. He's playing tricks! Bump him, girls! Bump him! They surged against me, urging me on. I bounced and lurched. I couldn't help it. The manager lost his footing, grabbed wildly for a handhold and disappeared. Beep, beep, beep! Bricks, guard, please! Mr. Bobby seized my controls, stopped the train and looked back. Two legs waved wildly from a bush. The manager was unhurt, but very cross. I am not like that fucking bronco again, he said. He sat in Beatrice for the rest of the journey. The directors complained they'd been badly shaken. They said it was my fault. Linnaeus will take the inspector tomorrow, they ordered. You will stay out of sight in the shed. But late that evening, the manager came. It wasn't your fault, Scarlowy. I'm sorry I was cross. We must do what the director's saying now, but I'll make it up to you later. The inspector was pleased with Linnaeus. You've done very well, he said kindly, for a new engine. He told the directors about some improvements which were needed. But, he went on, on the whole, your arrangements are good. He came to see me and the directors told him what they thought had happened. I think, gentlemen, he said, that you are mistaken. Scar Lowe should be a useful engine, but he needs another pair of wheels. Take my advice and have them fitted. Then you'll see the difference. Good day.